If I said the word synthetic, you'd probably think of a nice, pristine white polyester lab coat. If I said the words biology, you'd likely think of life and cells. Put the two together and you get synthetic biology. But as we'll see in this video, synthetic biology is about harnessing the power of nature to solve problems in medicine, manufacturing and agriculture. And I think that's marvellous. So, sounds pretty important, which is why we will take an intro in this video into synthetic biology. In particular, synthetic gene circuits, and how they could be applied to speed up drug discovery by using cellular reprogramming as a case study. So first then, what is really meant by synthetic biology, and what are synthetic gene circuits? Well firstly, it's the realisation and appreciation that cells, and groups of cells, are really quite clever. Clever in that they possess systems that enable them to respond to information in their external and internal environment, extract that data, and then interpret it to adjust their behaviour in space and time. Pretty impressive. And so synthetic biology, as nicely described here, aims to develop tools that tap into these native networks and dynamically access information in the cell. Synthetic gene circuits then enable real-time monitoring of diverse molecular events in live cells. So it sounds pretty cool, but before we get to that, let's just take a little step back, because at least for me right now, it's a Saturday morning, and I like to keep things quite chill. So if you've been following this channel for a while, then you know I study a pretty cool protein called P53. And if you're new, then hello, my name's Eleanor, and I like this protein. And what P53 does is it binds to DNA and it activates a specific subset of genes. P53 does this when it's active. Given that P53 is pretty important, it's of interest to know when P53 is active. I could do that by using a reporter system. I could put a P53 binding site upstream of a reporter gene, so it could be a fluorescent protein, such that when P53 is active, it binds to the site, activates this reporter gene, and then I can look at my cells and go, hey, this one's green, it therefore has active P53. So this is a form of synthetic biology. It's a tool that enables me to access information from the cell. P53 is active. But this is really just scratching the surface of what may be possible. The next step up from these simple reporter systems are synthetic gene circuits. Instead of having a direct readout of my P53 activity, an enhanced version could have, in quotes here, amplifier genes that get expressed, that then enhance this dynamic range of P53 activity and may offer extra sensitivity. And this is because there are inherent limitations with the current reporter systems, another one being that it just has one P53 binding site, and there are many variations within what a P53 binding site might be, and therefore there is information that is lost. Synthetic gene circuits could be built to condense signals from multiple gene regulatory networks into a single output. And you can also build in repressors to the system to increase the signal to noise ratio, or to increase the amount of information and the accuracy of that information that I can get from the cell. And so I suppose what I like about these synthetic gene circuits is that they enable creativity. You could in theory design what you want. I mean, well, obviously it might not work, you need good designs, and that's where the more of the engineering expertise comes in. But anyway, this P53 aspect is more of a weird niche that maybe I'm interested in, but what about something else? Something of a hot topic right now? I don't know, say, cellular reprogramming? Rejuvenation? Well yes, synthetic biology for sure will have potential here too. And in fact, in many ways you could say cellular reprogramming is a form of synthetic biology. You are adding in factors to a cell and forcing a cell to do something different, which we think will cause them to become stem cells. In this case, overexpressing the so-called Yamanaka factors, OCT4, SOX2, KLF4 and MYC, as demonstrated by Shinya Yamanaka first back in 2006, to convert differentiated cells into induced pluripotent stem cells. These stem cells have the capability to replicate or differentiate into other cell types. And so they're not only useful for disease modeling of human cells that are hard to access like neurons, but also have potential in regenerative medicine. But in reality, the bioengineering is not perfect yet here, 
and not all of the cells given these factors become induced pluripotent stem cells. So how can we use alternative synthetic biology approaches to make this more sophisticated? Well, ultimately, we have a phenotype that we're interested in, stem cells, and we want to test a variety of different therapeutic strategies. And using these different synthetic gene circuits could be built to try and speed up that process, to increase the signal-to-noise ratio, and to overcome some of the limitations that we currently see with cellular reprogramming. And to quote from this review article, Aging represents an important determinant of disease onset in vivo that remains challenging to assess in living cells, as aged cells display defects in metabolism, nuclear structure, which can inform the development of reporters and circuits. For example, you could design a reporter to aid in the identification of cells that have successfully reprogrammed. And then, I guess another area of interest in the aging field is treating neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's disease. And whilst it's still up for debate as to what the exact causes of these diseases are, one of the hallmarks of them is the presence of protein aggregates. And guess what? You can build a gene circuit that enables the expression of reporters in a cell when there are aggregates of proteins. And so you could then use the system to screen for drugs that prevent aggregation. And so whilst this video has been a brief introduction to synthetic gene biology, there is much to unpack and much that I'm trying to unpack myself as I learn more about this area. But that said, I did make an entire video showing how CRISPR can be used to reprogram cells, which is like got synthetic biology written all over it. So to learn about this approach, be sure to watch this video here. So with that, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters and thank you for listening.